Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the conversation series. I am thrilled today to have an awesome guest here with us. I have Monica Bradburn, and I'm going to kick it over to her so she can introduce herself and we can get into this. Oh, hi, everyone. I'm Monica, and I work for the MLB and the NHL as well for the MLB. I'm a live content creator. And then for the NHL, I'm a live social contributor. Um, so I photograph, videograph, and produce content for both um, MLB and NHL. Um, my birthday would just uh, happen January 5th. So I'm now 26 for the new year. Um, so I'm excited about that. Uh, yeah. And are you a born and raised Michigander? Yes. I love it here. This is my home. So nice. Nice. I want to do a little lightning round real quick just to get us started. Just okay. quick answers for you. Um, okay. Sony, Canon, or Nikon? Um, Nikon, but I, I used Canon first, but I converted to Nikon. Awesome. All right. Action or portrait? Uh, action. Photo or video? Photo. Favorite thing about Michigan? Um, the Great Lakes. Favorite thing about Alaska, and for, we'll get into this, but I just want everybody to kind of hear this first. Um, Alaska is the bears. Nice. Sports or wildlife? Oh, God. Um, that's like asking me to choose between my children. Um, <laughs> I don't have any children, but if I did. Um, <laughs> probably sports. Okay. Better energy, a hockey arena or baseball stadium? Uh, hockey. Better environment for taking photos, hockey arena or baseball stadium? Um, for taking photos, baseball. Favorite thing about sports? Um, the energy and the electricity that the fans bring and the players feed off the fans. So okay. I would say the, the um, energy. Nice. Instagram or TikTok? Um, Instagram. Okay. Favorite thing to do when you aren't behind the camera? Uh, work out and go to the gym. Nice. Short or long lens? Uh, long. Okay. Editing or the actual photo taking? Uh, actual photo taking. <laughs> okay. Um, I want to, I want to know first, like, do you remember your first camera? Do you still have your first camera? Um, no, I actually sold it on Facebook marketplace. So somebody around the area has it. <laughs> I don't know where it is. Uh, I sold it for 25 bucks though. So pretty good. Wow. But, um, yeah, it's a, it was a little green point and shoot camera, uh, Fuji film. I think it was like fine pics. Yeah. Something like that. I can't remember the exact name. It's in one of my TikToks, but um, I got that camera in seventh grade and I would just photograph my dog. I would photograph grass. <laughs> I would photograph the trees. Um, I live, so I live near a lake, but we live on the woods side. So okay. There was always a lot of birds and deer and uh, different frogs because there's like a swamp back there. Yeah. So I was just photographing different animals in the yard. Um, nothing crazy. And yeah. then uh, I went to Catholic school from kindergarten until eighth grade. And um, going into high school, I didn't know that there was uh, such thing as like a yearbook or newspaper. Um, I didn't really know what that was about because we didn't have that at Catholic school. Going to high school my freshman year, I was only allowed one elective and I forget exactly what I did. But once I found out that there was yearbook and newspaper, I was like my sophomore year, I'm like, I'm doing that. So that's kind of where I started and, yeah. and when I got my first camera. Now, hopping right into MLB and NHL, you've mm -hmm. been with MLB for a few years now, NHL a few months. Mm -hmm. how did what is your kind of sports story how did you get into sports okay so in college I joined um the newspaper called CM Life yep. and I went to Central Michigan University yep. so CM Life was a student-run newspaper uh so I started off as a staff photographer okay 
and I was, <laughs> I was too nervous to go up to the offices um, my freshman year of college, the first semester. I don't know why, if it was just like, I don't know, I was just like doubting myself, but um, second semester of freshman year, I decided to go up there, yeah. turn in an application, uh, had an interview, got hired to staff. Nice. And they had a shooting, um, all sorts of events. So we would shoot like the polar plunge, um, more like campus events, uh, different speakers who came to campus. Yeah. I photographed, um, I think his name was Damon John from Shark Tank. Okay. He okay. Like, yes. Yeah. yes. I know exactly. Yeah. What yeah. So he came and talked to CMU and one of the, <laughs> I'll always remember this because I would always joke around and be like a billionaire called me cute because I was up on stage and he was taking a selfie with the crowd. Yeah. And I got like a, a higher angle of him taking a selfie with the crowd. Nice. And he said, he goes, well, if my selfie doesn't turn out that at least this cute photographer has a photo. And so I just thought that was really funny. <laughs> Um, but so I would shoot different, um, events around campus and also for the newspaper, we would shoot, um, like spot news, which is anything that's unplanned that happens. So that's more, um, like car accidents or like, like tragedies, stuff that's like unplanned. And that's where I quickly realized that I do not like doing that kind of stuff and working for a newspaper in that aspect. There are good things about working for a newspaper, but you also have to shoot the sad stuff, which I really don't and didn't enjoy. Yep. Um, so that's where um, I also shot sports for the newspaper. And so that's when I was like, okay, I'm going to lean more towards more towards sports than, yep. than newspaper. Yep. So I worked for CM Life for two and a half years. So I was there uh, second semester, freshman year, okay. sophomore year, and then part of my junior year. Okay. And I was a staff photographer, assistant, um, photo editor, and then photo editor. Okay. And then there was no really moving up after photo editor. That's the highest position Got you it. could get. So I was looking for different options of what I could do. Um, and at that time, it was summer 2016, and I started working for University Communications, which is um, like the PR department. I worked for the, the school's university photographer. And since it was in the summer, there wasn't like a lot of events to photograph, yeah. but um, CMU had Special Olympics. They were um, known for doing that. Yeah. I got to shoot that. That was so fun. Yeah. Um, I shot different, oh, different marching bands would come to CMU um, and do marching band camps. We would host yeah. those. Um, but that job was like a lot of archiving, um, back end office work, which is all part of the job um, in photography. So yeah. learning those skills really helped. And then after UCOM, uh, is when I went to uh, university, or yeah, Chippewa Athletics. Nice. And that's where I started in athletics. Okay. Um, and then I don't know if you want me to bring this up now, because technically before athletics, I went to Alaska. Yeah. So I was just going to ask you that on the flip side of that, co uh, on the flip side of your yeah. sports coin, as you went to Alaska, yeah. you did all this stuff for the National Park Service. Yeah. Like, and uh, you're, photographs on your website are incredible too like how did you end up in Alaska doing this yeah so okay so the Alaska internship um was designed and brought about by the Central Michigan University photojournalism advisor okay so okay. he loves nature photography and he started it by he was in Alaska uh called one of the national parks and well he was in Michigan, called one of the national parks and said, hey, I'm a photographer. I would love to photograph at your park. If you could just give me a place to stay, I would love to do that. And so they had him go to Alaska. He photographed for, I believe it was Denali was his first park. 
So he's photographing for Denali. And then after that, other national parks started hearing about his work. So there was one summer where he traveled to every national park, well, not every national park, but yeah. quite a bit of national parks in Alaska and yeah. was out there for two weeks at each park photographing for them. Um, he has a family back in Michigan, kids and um, a wife and everything. And so it became a lot for him. Yeah. And he's like, why don't I turn this into a summer internship program where I can send students to yeah. um, the national parks to work for them? So that's what ended up happening. Um, he hand selects students. So you either have to be a junior or a senior. Okay. Um, to go and he chooses a national park that he thinks would suit you. Um, so he asked me if I wanted to go to Kenai Fjords National Park okay. the summer of 2017. And at first I <laughs> I was like, I wanted to do it of course, but I had never done anything like that yeah. in my life. I've never gone <laughs> to any place like Alaska. <laughs> And I don't know if anything could ever really prepare you yeah. fully for Alaska. Alaska. It, it's absolutely beautiful, absolutely insane. So ended up going to Alaska. I lived in Seward. Okay. And so uh, Kenai Fjords National Park is in Seward, Alaska. Okay, okay. And so that's where I was based. Um, part of it was I also worked for the Ocean Alaska Science and Learning Center. Yes. And so the Ocean Alaska Science and Learning Center covers um, every uh, national park that's like on the on the coast. Okay, okay. Um, so anything that involves the ocean yeah. is, is what they do. Got it. Um, and so one of the pr projects that they were working on was this project called Changing Tides. Yeah. And um, Changing Tides is a project between coastal brown bears and intertidal invertebrates and how yep. much the bears utilize the intertidal invertebrates. Yep. So intertidal invertebrates include clams, mussels, and barnacles. And they were worried that if there was like another oil spill or the intertidal invertebrates were to die off, what does that mean for the bears? But so the, the project, there was two parts. Uh, bear captures and uh, bear observations. Okay. So bear observations was like I just said, we were out in the sedge meadows, the researcher, her name was Joy. She was doing different observations on the bears. Um, she had a stopwatch where she would um, count, well, I'm not exactly sure what the, the stopwatch did, but she was like tracking something, yeah. but she would count how many times like the bear would chew. She would do different yeah. observations of, of where they would travel and this, this type of stuff. Um, yeah. But I was there photographing what she was doing. Yep. So I would get wide shots of her looking through the telescope, um, watching the bears. I would get up close of just like her eye up to the, I don't know what it's called. Yeah. The telescope? Yeah, but the little eyepiece. The there eyepiece. You, there you go. Okay. I got there. <laughs> um I would get photos of um just detail shots of like her stopwatch and her her pen and, and the notepad yeah um so that's that's um the observations and oh and for the observations we like we like lived out in the sedge meadows um in one of my tiktoks you can see like our tents yeah. are just in the middle of nowhere and there's like bears fighting in the corner so we were out there and if we had to go to the bathroom, like we would go oh. in a bucket. Yeah. It was like, I would never done <laughs> anything like that before, <laughs> but it was amazing. And then the second part was bear captures. And so this is where the researchers would go up into a helicopter. They would dart the bear. It would take about two minutes for the bear to be fully under. Yeah. Um, and then we'd go up to it. They would do the different tests. And I would just photograph and videograph that whole process. Got it. Um, yeah. So it was crazy. Yeah. I have, uh, Alaska's on my places that I'm dying to visit, but I, mm -hmm. I've, I've seen so many different videos and uh, photographs of just 
the brown bears and all the salmon and everything. And I'm just like, I'm dying to go. Uh, but yeah. it, it, it's an incredible project that you got to work on and go. It, it's just like, as a part of an internship with your college. I mean, that's one of the first that I've ever heard that does something like that. Yeah. And, and I always call it, I call it my study abroad experience because a lot of college kids will go to different countries and study yeah. abroad. And I just feel like going to Alaska, I basically studied abroad because I knew, I knew no one. It took two planes to come back here. If my parents wanted to see me, like I was miles away. So that was my little study, study abroad. Coming back onto the sports side. Yeah. You, I mean, the, one of the ways that I found you was on TikTok and you yeah. stick a GoPro on the top of your camera. And yeah. at the same time you're taking photographs, you have your tick, you have your GoPro going. How did mm-hmm. you come up with, the, with that concept? Because I've truly never seen somebody else put that together to kind of show everybody their work and how, what it kind of looks like. It actually started in college. That same um, professor who sent me to Alaska, one of our final assignments in college was we had to make a personal vision video. Okay. And so that personal vision video was supposed to sell you to um, a job. Uh, He put it in terms as you're going to put it on your website and you're like about me section. And then someone can watch that. And instead of reading something about you, they'll actually hear what you're saying um, through that video. So he said, you can do whatever you want, but you just have to be talking about you and your passion and and what you want to do. And he gave us full creative freedom. So I had no idea exactly how I wanted to start this, Um, but I just decided, and, and there's really no explanation to yeah. it I was just like I'm gonna stick a GoPro on my camera and I and I bought the GoPro for Alaska um oh, okay and so I just happened to have it uh, because of that and so I was like I'm gonna stick it to my camera and um shoot some some sporting events nice um and so that's kind of how it started was in college um and then how it started on TikTok yeah. was I it was the last game of the 2020 season. Okay. And I was like, you know, I'm just gonna do this at a professional game. And so stuck it on top of my camera. And, um, you know, at that time, since the the 2020 season had just ended, um, everyone like knew who I was and they knew okay, this is Monica. She's a photographer, works for MOB. Yep. Um, so in my first TikTok, you hear people saying hi to me. And, and yeah. um, that's something that I really take pride in too, is because any job that I have or any place that I work, I really try to make everyone, to make friends with everyone. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the people who say hi to me, a lot of them are coaches. Um, a lot of them are security guards. Um, I'm really good friends with the Bat Boys. Yeah. Uh, I just like to make friends around the ballpark because I'm there like five days out of the week. Yeah. I see people every day. So um, it's nice to uh, have friends around the ballpark, especially if I'm running to go catch a sunset or something. I pass one of the security guards. I know I'm like, oh, just go go to get the sunset. (laughs) They're like, oh, it's just Monica. But yeah, so the 2020 season, I added the GoPro to my camera. And I never ended up doing anything with the footage. Yeah. Um, I just kind of let it sit on my hard drive. Yeah. And then I uh, ended up going through a breakup and I uh, went through some of my old photos and my old footage um, and I ended up finding that. And I, I just made it a YouTube video. So... Oh. I it's um uh all landscape and uh there's a there's a couple of words and everything I didn't add photos in it but I just like made a little video of what it's like uh to photograph an MLB game yeah and so I posted it to my Instagram and my YouTube channel and um 
my little cousin, well, she's not, she's not little. I always <laughs> call her my little cousin, but she's 14. I do the same thing. I do the same thing. I'm like, you're little to me. Yeah. I'm so, like, I used to carry you around as a baby. Like yes. you always be little to me. Yeah. I'm the same yes. one. Yeah. Um, so she's 14 and she's a dancer. So she loves TikTok doing all the dances oh, yeah. and everything. And she's like, Monica, you should turn this video into a TikTok somehow. Okay. She's like, I think that you would do really good on TikTok. Like, it's really easy for people to go viral. And like, yeah. it's a good way to get, get yourself out there. Yeah. And I had TikTok um, just downloaded because me and my friend Reagan would send funny videos to each other. Nice. Um, so I had the app, but I never thought about like turning, turning what I do into a video. Yeah. Um, but then after she like bugged me about it for like two months, I was like, all right, I was like, I'll just do it. So I turned it into a TikTok and my first video, um, it took, it was like overnight was like 50,000 ish views, but then over time it's my first video is at like 200,000 nice. some views. And I was, I was freaking out because I have never <laughs> reached that amount of people. Like I'm just some little photographer and, and oh, yeah. I especially, I especially feel like people who are photographers or who are in the creative industry yeah. don't get a lot of credit for like what we do. Yeah. So it was crazy to see this amount of numbers. Yeah. Um, and so I started making more of these videos, um, and I read a lot of the comments and a lot of the comments were saying like, where are the final results? Like, we want to see the yeah. photos you take. Yeah. So then I was like, all right, let's just add them into the video. So then I started adding the photos that I take into my TikTok videos as you see it on the screen. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of, that's like how I kind of yeah. started. It's so cool. It's a different way to look at it too. Cause I just don't think most people are like, most people think to sh actually show the product while you're doing it. So it was yeah. a really like fresh perspective to put in, in a TikTok, you know what I mean? Like in a TikTok video. So I was like, I was like, I love this. I love the outlook mm -hmm. and I love Thanks. the interaction you get to see too. Like you were saying with everybody around the ballpark, it's a really cool way to look at it now, which uh, I, I've been at baseball games. I've been going to hockey games for 20 years of my life, mm -hmm. which is scarier being behind the glass at a hockey game or being near the bullpen or behind the net at a baseball game. I think it's definitely hockey. Okay. So far. Um, see, they're both, they're both scary in different ways. Okay. <laughs> hockey is scary because it's very fast paced. Yeah. Um, and the, the, it, it's, it's mostly scary during warmups because the pucks are flying everywhere. It's like 15 minutes of, yeah. of pure fury. And so that, that's why I get terrified, especially, yeah. um, with that little hole. Oh God. Yeah. The chances of it going in the hole are very slim. And I did Google this before I accepted the job. Um, I Googled like how many photographers have been hit by yeah. a puck. Yeah. Through the hole. I only saw one video of a guy getting hit. Um, so I was like, all right, this is it. The chances are slim, but it's still there. Yeah. Um, but I've learned, you know, when I'm not exactly sure of all the terms. So yeah. I'm sorry if I say some things wrong. Right, <laughs> but during warm-ups, they'll just do like some practice shots, but then they all get in a line and they yeah. just all start shooting quickly towards the yep, net. I'm not yep. sure what that's called, speed shooting yep. or something maybe. But I know when that happens, okay, I'm going to shut my hole and I'm just going to use my phone because the NHL and the teams also like phone video. Yep. So during that time, I'll be like, okay, I'm just going to shoot um, on my phone through the through the little glass. Yep. Because um, if you hold your phone up to the glass, it's not like blurred or yeah, it's not anything. Bad. So. I've learned when to open and close okay. the little hole. <laughs> I, I know just like when they're warming up too and that putt, well, even during the games, that puck hits the boards and it, yeah. it sounds like a gunshot. It really does. Yeah. And it's yeah. 
scares the ever living shit out of you to the point where you're yeah. like, you're like, I hate this so much right now. <laughs> yeah. I, I do never, I never want to get hit by one of those. No, I can't ruin the pearly whites. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> We we're um, season ticket holders. We're, our team is the Carolina Hurricanes. So we when we're far enough up that the chances of us like we're kind of half net. So the yeah. chance, but the chances of us getting hit by a puck are slim because we're so we're high up in the one hundreds. But we're like it's still not impossible. Yeah, but it's never a no. It's never, never a no. no. And like with baseball, it's easier to predict. Yeah. Um, you know, you can, you can predict, uh, if there'll be a foul ball yeah. on the right side or left side, depending on which way the batter hits. Yep. Um, yeah, mostly just foul balls. you got to watch out for, yeah. um, or if it, if it goes up and hits the net, sometimes it'll roll and hit the net and then come into okay. the photo. Well, okay. So then all of us in the photo, well, are like taking shelter because we don't <laughs> want to get hit. There's been a couple close calls, but I've never been hit. Um, one of my close friends in Arizona, she got hit. It was, um, got hit by, uh, a foul ball and she got a concussion. Oh. So yeah, it's, it's like pretty dangerous, but just being aware of your surroundings yeah. and yes, personally, I don't think the shot is worth it. So <laughs> I, I don't want to be concussed or hit or anything. So no. every time no. I'm just like duck and cover, duck and cover. Yeah. Um, your work, uh, it, as a photographer, I'm pretty, you've been on MLB, you've been on NHL, you've been on several teams, social media platforms. When you see stuff like that, like, can you put into words what that feeling is when you see that? Yeah. So recently, um, I was just on the NHL's. Yes. TikTok account. Yes. Um, and I know they have like 1.6 million followers. Yeah. Um, which doesn't necessarily mean that that 1.6 million will see the video. Yes. But I thought I was like, I was like, that's yeah. Monica. I know that's Monica. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can tell from the opes and the, and the, and the gasps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, my bosses at the NHL, um, they reached out to me. I actually got a text and I, and I usually wear my Fitbit watch. And so my text will, come up on yep. my watch yep. but it's only part of the text so it doesn't fully say what they're right. saying so I was looking at my watch I got a text and it's like hey Monica your TikTok or your your hockey TikTok came up on my for you page and like that was it and I was like oh god I'm in trouble oh, I, like, <laughs> I just always think of the worst or I'm like I'm like oh god I'm gonna get in trouble for this yeah. but then opened up my phone and it was like, Hey, Monica, your TikTok came up on my for you page. We were wondering, or we loved it. And we were wondering if you'd be interested in making one for the NHL account. And I was freaking out. I was like, <laughs> I called my mom um, into my room. I was like, mom, I was like, you'll never believe this. <laughs> so um, she was like, Oh, that's crazy. And uh, so that game was the new year's Eve game um, nice. that I shot. Yeah. And um, it was pretty good. It was a pretty good game. Yeah. Um, the Wings only had one goal. And then the Capitals. Yeah. Um, I know I'm going to pronounce his last name wrong. I already know it. But I think it's pronounced Ovex Ovechkin. Ovechkin. You got it. You're close. Ovechkin. Okay. Okay. So you got me. Ovechkin. <laughs> he um, scored that game, he scored the most power play goals in all of NHL history. Yeah. I was like, this is going to be, this is going to be great for the TikTok. And I mean, great for him too. Uh, so that's the one that, that they ended up using. Uh, yeah. And yeah, I guess to put into words, I, I just, I just can't, I can't even put into words, yeah. like the 55,000 followers that I have. Like, I never thought that I would see anything like like I'm so thankful for that I never thought I would see anything like that or that people would even care yeah about it yeah my hope my hope is that people come to the TikToks yeah. for the MLB the NHL or the players but they stay for me that's okay. what I, there you go that's what I hope yeah 
Absolutely. And I think, I, I think you've done a great job at showing both. You show the yeah. sports side, but then you like, you recently just went through your kind of whole story in parts. Yeah. And you just continue to bring yourself to your platform as well, along with sports. So I, I think you've done an incredible job of doing that. Um, it, I think you've created such a fun platform to follow, especially as a sports fan who loves to see that kind of look. It's, it's a fun platform to follow. Thanks. And yeah, a lot of people are like, how, like uh, her energy. Oh, so, oh gosh. Someone commented on one of my TikToks and said that that my personality is like like a like a drunk person all the time or something and that that I'm just like I just say crazy things but part of it I have a puck or a baseball come flying at you and see what happens <laughs> right part of that is true but so I live an hour away from Detroit so anytime okay. I go and shoot a game I drive okay and driving long distances makes me very tired and so I always drink an energy drink on the way to the ballpark. Got it. Got it. So then once I get to the ballpark, I'm all hyped up. And so that's part of the reason why I'm also so crazy in my TikToks yeah. is because I'm very caffeined up. <laughs> okay, yeah. What it like, do you have a favorite memory as being a sports photographer? This was okay. So this was the 2020 season during spring training. Um one of the one of the players hit a foul ball into the um into the dugout okay and this was i forget who they were playing but it was the diamondbacks and they played somebody else okay and i had just worked for the diamondbacks so a lot of the players remembered me from um when i worked there yeah so i was in the photo well on the diamondback side and one of the players hit a foul ball into the dugout and um, Ildemaro Vargas got the foul ball, yeah. came up, gave it to me and goes for you. <laughs> and <I was> like, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So I just set it to the side and <laughs> I just love like the little goofy moments like yeah. that. And sometimes yeah. I'm lucky enough to like catch him on my GoPro. Yeah. Um, just like the one that this is like the one that went crazy viral. It has like 1.4 million views. Yeah. One of the players um, on the Boston Red Sox, they were talking to me about um, anime and like my tattoo. And we started talking about Alaska and like that kind of stuff. And I just think it's fun to, to be able to talk to them and, and get to know their personalities because when when I do that, then I can like see how they like act on the field, if that makes oh, sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like um in, in Tigers, it for the Detroit Tigers, um, Jonathan Scope and Miggy, they're like the best of friends. Yeah. And so I know that whenever they're together, they're <laughs> gonna be up to some shenanigans or doing something <laughs> funny. Yeah. So I'm always photographing them. I'm always photographing Miggy because he's wild and yeah just has the best personality. Yes. Um, I also think that one of my favorite memories. I love the, there's one that I remember of yours that um, they were coming up um, from the locker room onto the field and they were like, Monica, Monica, take our picture as they were coming out. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, was, yeah. I was like, that, that's some baseball player stuff right there. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of them, a lot of them will post for me or they'll ask to get pictures with their friends. And yeah. part of that is because my photos go directly to them. Yep. So after the game, they can um, download that photo and like post it right away nice. or, or whatever. They know that, that I work, I mean, I don't work for them. I work for the MLB, but, but they get part it. of it is working for them. They get my content. So yeah. that's a lot of the time while they'll be like, hey, Monica, take my photo of this or yeah can you do this is because they know that they'll get it yeah yeah but I did I did think of this is this is probably my top favorite moment ever okay. um it was again in spring training in Arizona okay and I was photographing the Dodgers okay and I again I forget who they were playing but um one of their pitchers it was the I think it was first time pitching for the Dodgers okay either 
just got traded or got it. I forget exactly, but there was a specific request to make sure that I get warm up photos of this picture. Okay. Okay. Um, it was uh, uh, David Price, I believe. That sounds about right. Okay. Um, I know his last name was Price. Pretty sure first name David. Um, so at at spring training, this was before COVID. So yeah. all the Dodgers fans oh, God, yeah. were there. It yeah. was it was like a sea of blue. And um, during spring training, they're allowed to watch the the players warm up like in the warm-up facilities before they head to the to the field so there's this tunnel of fans that the players have to walk through to get to like the practice field yep so I started to see the the um, pitchers walk through that tunnel so I saw like Walker Bueller um and like all those all the other pitchers start walking through so I'm like okay I was like price should be walking with them so I'm like looking around like I don't see him or anything and as the players are walking through this tunnel of fans everyone's just screaming cheering they're so happy so excited to see their favorite players they're asking for them to like sign sign balls and bats and all that kind of stuff yep and I had to get to to where the players are I had to walk through that tunnel too (laughs) And like, who am I? Like, I'm just some, some photographer girl. I'm like, this is so, it's so awkward to walk through this crowd of fans. So I'm like waiting for all the, the pictures to go through. Yeah. And, and, um, cause also fans were taking photos of them and I didn't want to be in the background of their shots. Yeah. Like that's one of my, and I know I'm probably in the background of a million shots, but that's like my worst fear is like, I'm in the background, like looking dumb <laughs> or something. So I waited for all the, the pictures to go through. I finally started to walk through and I don't know what rush of adrenaline like came over me or why I decided to do this, (laughs) but I thought it was so funny. I just started waving (laughs) to people as I walked through, like I thought I was someone like, I just started waving to the crowd and everyone loved it. They all started freaking out and they were like, yeah, photo girl, photo girl, let's go. I love that. There was one guy who was like, will you, will you sign my ball? And I just like jokingly said, cause a lot of players will say this. I jokingly was like, oh, I'll get you after. Like I'll, I'll sign it after just like joking. I, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if that was just like my way to cope through the awkwardness, but it was so funny. And I know some Dodger fan out there has a video of me waving to the crowd. I don't know where it is, but the other funny slash awkward part of this story is I went over there and in my brain, I should have known this, but it just escaped me. I went over there and all the, the pitchers were, were warming up, but he was the starting pitcher. So yeah. of course he wouldn't come out until yeah. right before the game starts. So I walked through that tunnel for nothing because he wasn't even over there. So I had to walk back through the tunnel that I just made made a, a, a scene show up. <laughs> so I walked back through the tunnel and then this um older man asked me if I would sign his grandkids baseball and I I literally looked at I was like you want me to sign his ball and he's like yes please like please sign his ball so there's some kid out there who has has a uh, baseball with my signature on it I love it I love it it doesn't fa- it did in fact look like a two-year-old signed it um because I don't have a cool signature but I did. <laughs> I love that. That's a surrogate. And like, that would be what you'd have to do if you go through that tunnel. You just got to make the most of it and act like yeah. you're the hottest, hottest shit there. And you're like, yep, I'm here. Thank you so much. This yeah. is all for me kind of situation. It, it was the best because the crowd was eating it up. They loved it. <laughs> I love that. I think they, they might have cheered louder for me than they did for the Dodgers. So I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> My last question I have for you is just what inspires you? What inspires me? I think that my goddaughter inspires me. So my cousin Jessica, she has a little daughter. She's eight years old. um, And I uh, became her godmother uh, when she was born. And 
I just like I even though she's younger than me like I look up to her so much and like I just really want her to know that like she can do like whatever she wants in this world and like no matter what anyone says like she can follow her dreams and like be who she wants to be and so that's what really pushes me and inspires me to keep going is is just knowing that that I'm doing something that you know not a lot of women do and I hope that that inspires like other other female photographers too because this in this industry it is there is a lot of males um I've noticed that that there has been a lot of female representation lately, which is really awesome and amazing. Um, so I'm excited to see, see where that goes, but yeah, I, I just, I think that other, other female photographers inspire me. Um, my goddaughter, the younger generation inspires me. Um, yeah. Nice. I love that. I I think the same way with my younger cousins who are Mm -hmm. truly like this, 17 years old so they're not really younger um but I I feel the same way like I I try to make every experience whenever we're together I try to have as much fun with them and just do stuff with them take them places because I want them to know like if you work hard if you do what you you can do whatever you want to do the Mm -hmm. the world is so open right now for people to follow their passions, whether it's on TikTok, whether it's on YouTube, whatever it may be, you can chase whatever passion you really hold true. Um, yeah. There's so many open doors right now for people to walk through and really do what they want to. So I could not agree with you more on that one. Yeah. And, and people need to know to not let somebody tell you that you can't do something. Yes. And I think the best person to say it was Harry Styles when he it. said, um, he said, nobody can tell you, I forget. Okay. This is going to be, darn it. I messed it up. <laughs> I knew that I was going to mess it up I too. I, know, I think I know what you're talking about, but at the same time, I'm like, I was like, I don't even know if I can repeat it verbatim. I'm pretty, okay. Nobody, if you're, ha- it, oh, this is it. This Okay. Harry Styles said, if you're happy doing what you're doing, then yeah. nobody can tell you that you're unsuccessful. There you go. There you go. That was it. Such Father Harry. Quote. It's such a good quote. I have a yes. follow up question for you real quick. Cause you just kind of mentioned it being yeah. a female kind of in the sports world, there yeah. are more females coming in the sports world, which is incredible. And being a sports fan, I'm like, yes, let's go more female representation. What has yeah. kind of your experience been like? You've gotten a taste of baseball. You've gotten a taste of hockey, two very mm-hmm. different environments. But what is your kind of feel for females being in the sports industry right now? Personally, I haven't really had any struggles. Yeah. I know that that um, some organizations may be different, but every single organization that I've ever worked for in sports has always treated me with respect. and and um you know the same that that they would treat a male so yeah I I mean for me it's been really good I haven't had any struggles or anything um and I've had a lot of support too from from my male uh co-workers um the MLB cut four they did a feature on all of the female LCCs that work for the MLB Um, there was the Tigers, this was during, uh, women's history month. They also did, um, the Tigers, they did a feature on female photographers and creators during women's history month. And so I think a lot of people are really accepting of, of that. So, I mean, for me, it's been great. I, I love it. And I really haven't had any, any struggles and I love, and I hope that I hope that other, other people feel that way as well. I love that. Like I, like I said beforehand, I love that more and more opportunities are becoming available for female and like, it, it's becoming like a, a, like a basic thing. Like, yes, women love sports too. Women can be a part of sports organizations and understand as well. Um, yeah. So I love the opportunities that are becoming open for women in the sports industry. 
it's yeah. like a massive like yes stand up and cheer kind of situation <laughs> yeah yeah it's awesome yeah awesome monica thank you so much for coming on and being a guest um i loved getting to hear all of this with you and i appreciate you coming on uh yeah. And I can't no wait, to, I, I can't wait to see more of your TikToks. And if you do not follow Monica on social media, all of her socials will be linked down below. You can go follow right. her TikTok and her Instagram. And as always, I will see you guys back here next time. Bye y'all. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me.